more confusion in class yesterday than usual, so let me just go over some of the uh, answers to the worksheet. So uh, I, I think most people were able to get the, so here, here is my form of the worksheet from yesterday. I think that most people are able to get the first four okay, but then the last three got a little bit tricky, so let me go over those. So. Uh, number five was the limit as t goes to pi over two of cotangent, cotangent t over cosecant t. And so the thing that, oops, cotangent of t uh, minus uh, over cosecant of t. And so probably the most natural thing to do is we should be much more comfortable, familiar with sines and cosines than cotangents and cosecants. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So all of that is over uh, cosecant is one over sine. So we can rearrange this, or rather we can even just quickly go ahead and see those signs are going to cancel because when we flip that this sine of t comes upstairs, and so we're just left with the limit as t goes to pi over 2 of cosine t. And the limit as t goes to pi over 2 of cosine t, this is continuous, so it's just cosine of pi over 2, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0, which is our final answer. However, it is worth noting that uh, in some sense, in retrospect, if we're careful, we might wonder what this problem was doing on the, on the indeterminate forms worksheet in the first place. This is supposed to be about indeterminate forms. Well, guess what? If we simply had gone back to this function, cotangent of t over cosecant of t, and we plug in uh, pi over 2, we would have cotangent of pi over 2 over um, cosecant, oops, CSC of pi over 2. And this end actually just ends up being 0 over 1, which is 0. So actually, we didn't have to uh, use, uh, use the algebraic manipulation. It's not a bad thing to do, but this actually wasn't an indeterminate form. It's something that snuck its way onto this worksheet. Okay, so that's, not, that, that's a warm-up. Uh, let's look at the second problem. So the second problem was the limit of secant minus tangent as t went to pi over 2. So let's attack this one. So the limit as t goes to pi over 2 of secant t minus tangent t. So... Now this is in a case that this is a infinity minus infinity indeterminate form. Uh, so we are going to, so we can't just uh, cheat here, we have to crunch through everything. So once again, the, the best first step is to rewrite this using sines and cosines, because that will make our, it, it, it's, it's more comfortable feeling. So secant is one over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. And then the most natural thing to do here is that when we have two fractions, we want to combine those together into a single fraction. So limit as t goes to pi over 2 of cosine t, 1 minus sine t. So this is where I think many of the groups got to, uh, but I think many, many groups got stuck here. And I should say, this is a, th this is a very natural place to get stuck, because the very next step is not one that I necessarily would have come up with, with myself the first time I, I saw this stuff, but we'll see that this is a, but that there is a standard trick to do when you have this kind of 1 minus sine t or 1 minus cosine t, we'll see that, um, we'll, we'll see how to handle it. And so here's the trick. So we have the limit as t goes to pi over 2. So once again, note that we're in a, so 1 minus sine of pi over 2 is 0, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we're in a 0. So right now, 
we went from an infinity minus infinity indeterminate form to a zero over zero indeterminate form. And so here's the trick. So we're going to multiply and divide by the same thing, and that same thing is going to be 1 plus sine t. And so when we do this, we end up with, so the numerator goes to 1 minus sine squared t over cosine t times 1 plus sine t. So now, why did we make this change? What's the advantage here? Well, the advantage lies in, what is this numerator? 1 minus sine squared t is equal to cosine squared t because cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. So we can replace the numerator with cosine squared t. And now we can cancel out one of the factors of cosine t in the numerator with the factor of cosine t in the denominator. And so, what do we have here? The limit as t goes to pi over 2 of cosine t over 1 plus sine t. Now when we plug this in, we don't get a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So cosine of pi over 2 over 1 plus sine of pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and so our final answer here is 0. So this is a pretty common trick. I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to talk about this too much with you in groups yesterday, but this is a common trick where, what, let's just trace through our thinking from before. Uh, all the way through. So going from here to here should have been relatively mechanical. Rewrite in terms of sines and cosines, put over a common denominator. So then the one creative step here is seeing we've got a 1 minus sine t. That's tricky to deal with. But it's, and the thing is we'd like to see some cos, you know, have a cosine t up here to be able to cancel with the cosine t in the denominator. So how do we get that factor of cosine t? Well, you know, we want to go for something that's cosine squared t, which we can achieve by multiplying, uh, multiplying both sides, both the top and the bottom, by 1 plus uh, sine t. Because this factor and this factor combine together as 1 minus sine squared t, which is cosine squared t. So whenever we see something like that, a 1 minus sine t, 1 plus sine t, 1 minus cosine t, 1 plus cosine t, we should be thinking about uh, how to handle that. And this is a very good trick to stick in your pocket. So with that in mind, here is the final problem. The final problem from the worksheet was limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over sine theta. So with what we just learned, uh, you should be able to uh, crunch through this problem. Uh, you, you might want to try this right now by yourself.